Hey there, my friends, Hank here, and today we're gonna beat up this ME262. This video is gonna be all about creating realistic aircraft chipping and paint wear on your scale model aircraft. Now, these iconic warbirds that we've all come to know and recognize were worked hard by their crews. And if you look at reference images from the period, these planes usually have the scars to show it. So in this video, we're gonna look at my favorite technique for recreating authentic, convincing wear on your next scale model project. Whether it's a Luftwaffe bird, a Spit, P-47, doesn't matter, this method works across the board. So with that said, let's head over to the bench and we can see what we can do. Okay, now to recreate the most authentic paint chipping in miniature, we're gonna literally chip some paint. There are many methods that modelers use to achieve this effect, but by actually recreating the natural event of chipping paint, we can get the best chipped paint. Funny how that works, huh? The trick though, is that we need to accelerate this process. We can't fly 50 sorties in this little fella, so we're gonna have to cheat a little bit. And our best friend for that, believe it or not, is gonna be a bit of hairspray. But before we get into all that, we've gotta get our plane ready to go here. Go through all your normal building process, get the aircraft all finished, the interior painted and masked off, and then go ahead and prime up your build like you normally would. At this stage, I like to spray the entire kit with a coat of white aluminum. This will be our exposure coat, let's call it. This is what we want to reveal when we start chipping our subsequent camouflage layers. Once that aluminum coat is on there, we're going to grab our bottle of hairspray. This can be really any standard hairspray you can pick up at a convenience store, a grocery store, whatever. I like this Aquanet stuff. And we're gonna take this and very, very carefully decant it into our airbrush. Slowly depress the nozzle of the hairspray and let it kind of trickle out into the cup of your brush. Go slow, try not to make a big old mess, and no, you cannot just spray the hairspray right onto your model. Use the airbrush. The hairspray nozzle is big and clumsy and it's gonna leave lots of spots and bubbles all over your kit. Don't do it. With the hairspray loaded up in our brush, let's start spraying it on our kit like you would with a normal clear varnish coat. Get a nice even spray all over our kit here. Once that is all set, let the hairspray cure and dry completely. It should be totally dry to the touch. And once the hairspray is settled completely, you can go ahead and paint up your aircraft as you normally would. I'm painting up this 262 with a nice late war RLM 768182 scheme. More on that in a later video. Once our paint job is done, it's now time for our chipping. To do this, we need two old stiff bristled brushes, one small and one a bit larger, like so. And we're gonna need some clean tap water. Now with our larger brush, let's start gently applying some of that water to the maintenance access and filler ports on our port engine nacelle. We'll also apply some of that water to our wing root area as well. And after this is set for maybe 30 seconds or so, we're gonna come back with our small brush and start actually removing paint. Now what is happening here is our water is soaking through our outer layer of camo paint. We're using acrylic paints so they're water soluble. Once that water hits our hairspray coat, the hairspray is going to start immediately breaking down. The water is going to break up the concentrate polymers in the product and that's going to separate from our initial aluminum coat. So our acrylic base primer and our base aluminum as well as our acrylic camo colors are not going to break down. They're designed to be water resistant once dried. But our hairspray in the middle there will break down. And by doing so, that is gonna allow us to literally chip off our upper layer of paint because that layer of hairspray that it was clinging onto is no longer chemically bonded there, see? Now, there are two basic rules to keep in mind to this method, more guidelines, really. Number one, go slow. Take your time, be gentle, add increasing pressure as you brush along here until you start getting the results that you want. Once this hairspray disintegrates and the paint actually starts to lift off, it's gonna happen fast, so you don't wanna pull off more than you actually want, which leads to point number two. Less is more. If you look at reference photos and videos, you'll see that this chipping is real. It certainly does happen to these vehicles, but not all over the place. This worn paint is from contact and activity, so we wanna concentrate our efforts on areas of the aircraft that would be seeing the most interaction with ground and air crews. Wing routes, where the guys are actually gonna be standing on the aircraft, the sides of the fuselage where the pilots will be sliding in and out of the plane, access hatches, filler ports, think of hoses and materials being dragged into and out of those portions of the aircraft. This activity is what will cause this paint damage, so that's what we're looking to replicate. A big old batch of paint missing from the far end of the wing doesn't really make sense. Nobody's walking around out there, and hopefully nobody on the ground has been messing with that area too much either. My suggestion 
try and find a reference photo, a video, whatever you can, and use that as your guideline for where to create your chips. And when you're happy with your level of chipping, let that water dry completely, step away for a bit, and then carry on with your project as you usually would. Apply your gloss coat, move on to weathering, etc. And when all is said and done, you've got yourself a beautiful beat up paint scheme to add a little more character and realism to your build. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll speak to the actual late war camo scheme you see here on this 262 in our next video, so stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, check out these other aircraft tutorials that you might find useful in your next project. Until next time, my friends, be well, happy building, cheers.